Why don't we try the, the common ion effect? Okay. Because uh, that's important too. That's pretty likely to be on the test. How do you call this common ion? The common ion effect, yeah. So we got here that the molar solubility was 0 0.012 molar. Now, what this means is if you start with pure water, you can dissolve 0 0.012 molar of calcium hydroxide. If you start with pure water, you can dissolve 0 0.012 molar of calcium hydroxide. So we're just having the same um, setup? Uh, yeah, well, I'm going to build on this. So um, if you start uh, with pure water, you can dissolve 0 0.012 molar of calcium hydroxide. But what if you don't start with pure water? What if you start with water that already has a bunch of hydroxides in it? What if you start with water that already has, um, well, let's put it this way. What if you start with water that already has a bunch of calciums in it? Okay. If there was already a bunch of calciums, do you think that that would increase or decrease the amount of calcium hydroxide we could dissolve? If there was already decrease. a bunch of calcium even before we put in the calcium hydroxide, would that allow us to dissolve more or less calcium hydroxide? Less calcium Yeah, hydroxide. that's good. And roughly speaking, the reason for that is we know there's a limit to how much calcium we can dissolve. So if we've already dissolved a bunch of calcium from some other source, mm -hmm. that will decrease the amount of calcium that we, can that we can dissolve from the calcium hydroxide. Okay. So that logic is, again, that there's a limit to how much calcium we can dissolve. If we've already dissolved a lot of calcium from some other source, then that will decrease the amount of calcium we can uh, dissolve from the calcium hydroxide. Okay. Now, that, that, uh, that's, that logic is a little bit rough. That, that's not 100% correct, but that, that's good enough to understand this. That's a good enough logic to get, to get a feel for this effect. Um, why is this called the common ion effect? Well, because the calcium here is a common ion. That some, we've already added calcium from something else, and that's common to what's in here. So when you add a common ion, does that increase or decrease the solubility of the salt? Decreases solubility of yeah. the salt. Yeah. If you add a substance that has a common ion to the salt, that decreases the solubility of the salt. And roughly speaking, we can say that's because there's a limit to how much of that common ion we can dissolve. So if we've already dissolved some of the ion from one source, that decreases the amount that we can dissolve from our salt. the salt that has that common ion. And we should be able to understand why that is based on what we were just talking so, about. Okay. Now let's think about something else. When we add calcium to this, when we add calcium to the solution, does that increase calcium hydroxide's KSP, decrease calcium hydroxide's KSP, or have no effect on calcium hydroxide's KSP? When you add more calcium ions to the solution, does that increase the salt's KSP, decrease the salt's KSP, or have no effect on the salt's KSP? It shouldn't have effect. Is that because if you have, I mean, because KSP stands for saturation. Like right. It's like the kind of, um, it's like the furthest we can go. So we cannot right. like influence that. That's a very good answer. That's a very good answer. So we know that the KSP expression is this. So the key point is the KSP does not have anything to do with the actual amount of calcium that is dissolved in the solution. The KSP only depends on the amount of calcium that would be dissolved at saturation. Mm -hmm. 
KSP only depends on how much calcium would be dissolved at saturation. It has nothing to do with the actual amount of calcium that's mm -hmm. dissolved. And therefore, putting, dissolving more calcium has no effect on the KSP. Because we're not changing the amount of calcium that would be dissolved at saturation. We're changing the actual amount of calcium. I think we talked about a similar idea when we talked about Q and K and equilibrium constants. When you change concentrations, that doesn't change the K. Because K doesn't, the equilibrium constant doesn't depend on the concentrations. It depends on what the concentrations would be at equilibrium. Mm -hmm. So by the same token that you gave the right answer, when we change the concentration of calcium that we actually have, that doesn't change how much calcium there would be at saturation. So it doesn't change the KSP. Okay. That's um, why this is called the solubility product constant. Because it does, it's constant. Uh, changing the concentration doesn't change it. Let's try to set up a problem. So now I have a new problem. Now I want to find the molar solubility of calcium hydroxide and 0.1 molar calcium nitrate. So now we have a new problem. The new problem, we already answered the old problem. Now the new problem is to find the molar solubility of calcium hydroxide and 0.1 molar calcium nitrate. So first we need to start with the reaction equation. Good. Let's try to get a prediction though. What can you predict about our answer? about the answer to this question. Um, so we need to add then um, NO Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, I, it's like, okay, we just need to add NO3 with something, yeah, like as a compound that right. where we can dissolve the CaOH. So it's going to be CaNO2 plus um, some kind of, no, plus CaNO3 2. And then we'll get. Well, let's not get too much into those details. I just want to give a kind of qualitative prediction here. Well, remember that we already figured out what the molar solubility of calcium hydroxide would be in pure water. Mm -hmm. What was the molar solubility of calcium hydroxide in pure water? 0 0.012 molar. So what will the molar solubility of the calcium hydroxide be in 0.1 molar calcium nitrate? Will it be bigger than we had before, smaller than we had before, or equal to what we had before? Smaller. That's right. That's right. How do you know? Because it would said because we have common um, ion already, CaNO3, too, so yeah. Gonna, I mean, Good. Who is the common ion? Ca2. Yeah. Plus. That, co that common ion is the calcium. So again, roughly speaking, there's a limit to how much calcium we can dissolve. If we've already dissolved calcium from this substance, that will decrease the amount of calcium we can dissolve from this substance. So we would expect now this is going to have a lower solubility. So that's what I meant when I asked for a prediction. Our prediction is that the answer will be less than 0 0.012. Oh, okay. So let's write that down. I'll write down that um, my, we predict that the molar solubility would be less than 0 0.012. And what's the name of that? That's the common ion effect. 